Why did my ex move on so quickly is the question I will answer today in this video. I am a relationship counselor and my job is to help you get back with your ex. And in some cases, uh, you could experience the, you know, an ex that seems to move on very quickly. We'll, I will explain you, the first of all, the, the science of moving on because that's what I do as a counselor. And also I will highlight five common cases five uh, examples of uh, why people would move on very quickly along with the likelihood of you getting back with your ex. The first one has 0%, the last one has the highest uh, percentage of you getting back with them, so bear with me till the end. Take a I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance. The science of moving on. So as I said, it's my my day-to-day -day job basically as a counselor, and I find it extremely fascinating because heartbreak is a complex mechanism. It involves a lot of things from psychology to attachment, looking at different traumas. Uh, when I say trauma, it's not necessarily uh, that you had an abusive childhood, but micro trauma from different relationship or uh, when you were a kid. On average, it takes three to six months for people to move on. So if you realize that your ex moved on after a week or two, that's obviously really fast. If it's been three months and you've been, you think that your ex moved on quickly, it's not really quick if you compare to the average. So these five cases, I'm gonna start with the first one. The first one is you just, he was just, or she was not just into you. It's a common reason probably the most common reason, um, your relationship was one-sided. The investment on their side was not the same as yours. And as they were not involved um, in the same way, it's very easy for them to leave. It's very easy for them to detach. When you're not holding onto something too hard, it's very easy to detach, like almost a mechanic. You can measure this involvement um, and the strength of the relationship, and what I call uh, how can you determine whether your relationship is recoverable? Um, I put together a quiz and I've done this quiz just to help you out figuring out whether you have any chance to get back with your ex. The link is in the first comment, no, it's in the description, sorry. First link in the description. Um, it's totally free and you get the results right away, but at least you have an idea whether you fall into this category. And if it's, if your score is below 15, your chances are about 0%. Second reason they grieved the relationship while together. This one is 10%, it's kind of hard. 30% of the, usually we say and we analyze that about 30% of the relationship, your ex uh, was thinking about breaking up with you. Does it mean that, let's say you've been together for three years and they sort of broke up with you mentally a year ago. No, it means that they started to nurture this idea. And for a year they reflected and sort of came up with the idea of breaking up with you after a year. But in some cases, people would start to withdraw months ago. And I had, um, I interviewed someone who um, divorced her husband and she told me like, I felt dead inside. And the, the breakup therefore meant like massive liberation because for months she felt like it's dead, there's nothing, it's stagnation, I'm just staying in this relationship because, uh, because, of, because they didn't have kids, because of the, uh, our friends, I didn't want to look stupid um, and because we were married and I, I had some hopes but every single day I felt, I felt dead inside and the breakup would basically become a liberation and the last thing they would want is to look behind, to look backwards at the relationship. So it's very hard to get back with those people because for them that decision uh, took place a while ago and they are convinced about, the, um, about this. I say 10% and not 0% because who knows, perhaps they you know grieve the relationship before but you will have to wait a lot of time, maybe them to date someone to have a new experience of life and reunite afterwards. But in those cases, if your ex 
grieve the relationship before, it's going to be extremely, extremely hard to get back together. The third one, the avoidant attachment style. So, dismissive avoidant people have a tendency to feel detached, right? Obviously. Um, they love, they love, the, the definition of love is, I love you, but within an arm length, okay? <laughs> I love to live with you in the same house, but not in the same room. Okay, if we look at uh, figuratively speaking. The other thing important you have to know is, and when you look at the definition and the core uh, element of someone who is um, avoidant, they have this ability of self-soothing. Um, it's something they developed as a child. I was a former dismissive avoidant, and therefore, if I want to feel better, if I'm stressed, I'd rather be on my own, and I would have, I developed this ability to uh, manage this, this stress on my own. I don't need to vent, I don't need to uh, be with people, I actually need to be on my own. And also, the other thing, and that's why it's called dismissive, dismiss emotion. So for a long time, I thought I didn't have any emotion. It's just that I have learned to dismiss those emotions um, and to distract myself with other things. Okay, so a breakup, even if they took the decision, and even if they didn't take the decision in a way, it's very easy for an avoidant to deal with it because they have a tendency to keep things at a distance, to not get too emotionally involved, and to have the ability to self soothe So you might be thinking, well, if my ex is an avoidant, there's no way I'm going to get him or her back because they don't feel the pain, they don't feel the same pain, and so how would they sort of have the energy, the desire to get back together if they actually don't care. It's more complex than that. It's not because they don't suffer this breakup that they won't say no to a new, healthier relationship with you. It's just that the breakup is less painful for them. So don't misinterpret being detached and moving on. Um, the process of moving on with a, an avoidant is slightly different and I've done some videos about that. If you have any question about avoidance attachment style, there's a, a link in the description if you want to WhatsApp me or book a consultation with me. I'd be more than happy to help you. Um, and I say 50% chance because the problem is with avoidant people, it's hard to assess where they are, whether they actually moved on before or whether their behavior is just because they're avoidant. Um, so depending also on your actions, depending on whether you're anxious, you're needy, you're clingy, you're going to reduce your chance. If you do the right things and manage to work on being more secure, the chances could be above 50%. 60% for dating someone, you'd be surprised about this one. <laughs> it's more than half of the cases. If they are dating someone shortly after a breakup that's called a rebound relationship, the reason people uh, get into rebound relationship is to cope with the breakup. It's not out of a desire to be with someone because they love the person. Of course, they not, nobody forced them to be with that person. But the desire, the primary desire is to cope with the breakup. To put there, you know, as you know, you want to distract yourself, you want to feel better, you want to cope with this, you want to be with someone. And so you find someone who would be statistically random. <laughs> It's statistically impossible to meet someone important so quickly. It took years for you to meet your ex. How come in a week, four weeks, they meet someone who, for whom it will click as much as it did with you? And again, we ask, you need to assess whether your relationship is recoverable. So being with someone takes, away, takes um, you away from the breakup, but it doesn't mean your story is over. And in those cases, you really have to wait for the relationship to be over. It provides, actually, see it as an opportunity for you to really focus on yourself. There's a lot of things about no contact. When your ex is dating someone, you have to go no contact. Unless your ex is really, wants, really wants to stay in touch with you, in that case, you can play around because then that rebound could be very jealous. But otherwise, it means go no contact and wait few months either for the relationship to collapse or for you to break no contact just to see where they are. Um, because rebound relationship, the other thing about rebound relationship is they fail. Usually, usually they fail most of the time. Uh, and that's why you have 
Uh, it's more than half, uh, more than 60% chance for you to get back together if your ex is dating someone. Fifth one is they are masking. Uh, it's a psychological term. People who mask what they're, uh, what they're thinking, what their, their internal state. You can only see the visible part of the iceberg. And so you see social media, you hear uh, from their best friends who are on their side, obviously. And in a, in a sense, it means that they want to win the breakup. They really want to show like, yeah, I have an amazing life. I took the best decision ever. But when you feel it's fake, when you feel it's too much, then it means that they are still involved emotionally. There's something. And that's what we want. We want there's still this, even if sometimes people say hate and love are the same, are two sides of a coin. This is maybe what we, and I don't care. If they really want, uh, if they really sort of spend a lot of time trying to mask them, trying to pretend, it's because there's something behind, right? And this something is huge because it means we can rekindle things. As long as we remove anything that's preventing you from uh, making this relationship work, and that could be a lot of work, by the way, then they will be basically changing their mindset. If you do the right things, you can definitely win them back if that's the case. Because again, there is something. They are not neutral. The worst thing that you can have when it comes to getting back with your ex is that your ex is neutral towards you. So the first case, they were not into you. They are very neutral. Second case we discussed, uh, what was it? Is, <laughs> <for God. laughs> they grieve the relationship and therefore they're neutral. Because like maybe when they started to have this idea, they, they still have this emotional investment. But as time went by, towards the, you know, very soon before the breakup, they were very neutral about you. You are nothing to them. The, the third one is more complex because avoidant, they have a tendency, their base is more neutral than other people. They're less emotional, they're less um, than, than secure or anxious people. And therefore, um, but they still have, they're usually not neutral if they were in love because it's not because you're avoidant that you can't have feelings. The fourth one, they are dating someone. They're just dismissing this. They're just hiding this. They're just putting dust underneath the carpet, but it's just a question of time until things reappear as soon as they break up with their partner. What will they want to do is to get someone to cope with that breakup. And that person could be you. And masking, as we discussed, masking is a sign that they are not neutral. It's the sign that there's something. And then when there's something, there's a way. If you have any other uh, comments, don't hesitate to comment on the video and like as well. I'll see you next time. Bye. Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer.